With a proper vaccine, we can successfully end this pandemic. However, making a vaccine is much easier said than done. What goes into the creation of a vaccine? And how close are we to obtaining a safe, functional vaccine for COVID-19? There are two classic types of vaccines. The first is an inactivated vaccine. This is when a virus is deactivated and injected into a person. Their immune system sees the foreign components of the virus and develops an immune response against it. The other type of vaccine is a weakened or attenuated vaccine. This is when a microbe is modified so that it cannot cause disease, but is still recognized by the immune system as a threat. This type of vaccine generally provides immunity for longer periods of time. An attenuated vaccine is safe, but since it is live, it can be problematic if the patient does not have a functional immune system. There are some newer types of vaccines that are in development too. One new category is to inject DNA or RNA that codes for viral proteins into a person. Thus, the person can develop immunity to those proteins without ever being exposed to the entire virus. So there's a minimal chance of disease from the vaccine itself. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, which have both been given emergency use authorization by the FDA, are both RNA vaccines. The two kinds of immunity that vaccines try to generate when we give them to people are antibody immunity and cellular immunity. First, let's talk about antibody immunity. Antibodies are proteins that are secreted from white blood cells, whose function is to bind to viruses. Because antibodies are located outside of the cell, they can only stop viruses before they have either entered or exited the cell. The second type of immunity, cellular immunity, has evolved to help our immune system find cells containing pathogens and to kill them in order to prevent the microbes from replicating. An inactive vaccine only generates antibody immunity, whereas an attenuated vaccine generates both antibody and cellular immunity. Both types of immunity, when together, create a strong antiviral defense. Vaccines take a long time to get approved by the American Food and Drug Administration. Other countries don't have as stringent of a process, which is why Russia and China already have approved vaccines. The FDA carefully approves drugs and vaccines through three stages of clinical trials, which test the safety and dosing of a vaccine. In the first two stages, the tests are given to a small group, generally dozens to a few hundred people. The third stage involves a larger population, sometimes numbering in the thousands. There are many countries and companies developing vaccines against the novel coronavirus. For the most part, each vaccine being developed targets the same part of the virus, the spikes. Viruses use these spike proteins to convince the cells to invite the virus in as a guest. To stop the SARS-CoV-2 virus from entering into our cells, researchers are developing vaccines that promote the production of antibodies that stick to the spike proteins and create a glove-like coat, preventing entry into the cell. Researchers are also using messenger RNA to create a partial copy of the genome of the coronavirus and inserting it into our cells. Our cells then make the viral spike protein. And then the immune system can begin to recognize that protein without any possible danger of making the entire virus. This approach was recently approved for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. An exciting aspect of this new type of vaccine is that it can generate both antibody and cellular immunity against a pathogen, which should give long-term protection. A downside of this approach is that RNA doesn't penetrate into our cells very effectively. Other researchers have taken a virus that causes common cold-like symptoms called adenovirus, removed genes from that virus, and replaced them with the coronavirus spike protein gene, creating a recombinant vaccine. Viruses are experts at gaining admission to our cells, so this is a highly effective way to deliver genes to cells. The adenovirus delivers the gene for the coronavirus spike protein. Human cells make that protein, and the immune system recognizes it and mounts an attack against it. This approach can also generate both antibody and cellular immunity. There are many different vaccines in the works, all working to target different parts of the virus and protect those in our community. Many scientists agree that the odds of creating an effective vaccine are good. But in the meantime, to protect ourselves and others, we can social distance, wash our hands, and stay safe.